Now is the time for RVA. Don't be afraid and don't delay. Minute by minute, that's how you'll win it. We are not afraid. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to a, another RVA Recap Weekly. This is for week number 179, Boundless, Terrifying Freedom, which I'm assuming is a reference to Era Slant. In the, the remake, I was lucky enough to get on two of these streams tonight, so thought I'd do a little recap match analysis, if you will. Thanks, as always, to that handsome rascal down there in the corner, John Schreiner, for course hosting these and you know just running the entire event if you would like to check out his channel which again is hard to believe that you, you watch my stuff but you don't watch his stuff but i will link a description a, a, i'll put a link for his twitch channel down in the description below now i of course started with a nice tribute to alan minkins seize the day from newbie and from newsies can we seize the day in rva where well, we're gonna find out so i am playing my ice lightning list that I have done a deck tech on, which I will also link in the description below. And I really like the way it ran tonight, so I thought this would be a good showcase for it. Ice Lightning in. It's pedal to the metal for most of the night, baby. So I think I went first here. This is the second match of the evening. Maybe it was second. But I know I put out Restrictor. I might have put out Restrictor and Nero both on turn one. My opponent <laughs> pitched uh, three, two Claris to play the third Claris, which was pretty awesome. And then went and got Kolka. And he knows I have Vice in hand because of the Nero, so he's putting the Tama down. He's got three in hand, and I'm like, well, let's uh, see what we can do. So I go ahead and pitch Axis, bring down Vice, Vice, Nero, such a great combination. Two separate auto abilities. First, Nero will trigger, say, sir, would you kindly discard? And uh, my opponent, Austin, over there says, oh, I'll discard, all right. I'll throw my whole damn hand out. Here's Sephiroth. How you like that, sucker? So I'm like, oh, yeah, look at that. Technically, you didn't discard a card to my ability, so I don't get it all freeze. However, I was like, all right, if we're going to play the pitch the hand game. Let's do it. I throw out Sid Randall for the last well, say, well, I'm not going to let you attack that Sephiroth. And he says, actually, you are, because I'm going to cancel that with Tama. Was that worth it for him? I'm not sure. We're going to find out. I'm, I'm, I'm still pretty happy with this. We're both on nothing in hand. I have the superior backups. I also have two forwards, which is nice. My one concern is, yeah, I know he can attack with Sephiroth here to break the Laswell. But, and I, I actually decide to trade here with the Vice, and this is a situation I, I, I kind of second-guessed upon viewing, like, well, I don't know. And so the problem is now, I'm in top deck mode, so if I don't top deck anything useful, I could really get hurt here. But the reason I did it is, he is also in top deck mode. Yeah, he gets a two for one on the Sephiroth, but if I don't block the Sephiroth there, one, I have no guarantee that Weiss is going to get into the discard. Two, if I don't get rid of that Sephiroth, I'm still going to top deck two cards for turn, and if I cannot use those cards, Sephiroth is going to keep getting discards out of my hand. So part of me said, you know what? The for sure thing is if I kill it now, he can't keep using the discard. So went ahead and blocked there. Uh, lucky for me, I do believe I do get something playable. I think I get Axis, yeah. Nothing, you know, not, not uh, amazing, but because I can't play it on curve, unfortunately. But it does at least, I like this play because it loads up the break zone. And now he basically Axis is immune to him killing it because anything he would try to kill it with, I just, I sacrifice it to go get ba a back a card other than, you know, random experts. So, <laughs> Ghoul, if you're watching this, know that I'd really actually do like Axis in this deck. And normally I was very anti Axis, so happy to have it here. So then it goes back to Austin's turn, and he is going to... Does he try to curve out here? I want to say he tries to curve out here with, like, Tyro. Let's see. Yep, so he plays Tyro. What does he get with Tyro? I think he gets Riku. Or he discards the Riku. John is playing Break Key down there. He gets the Bosch. That's right. So he's getting ready to... Okay, well, Bosch is... It actually was a really good target for him, because now he can go search out whatever he wants. Yeah, those are some cool little break keys. I don't really get into the whole break key game that they play. And granted, I've never played it. I've just, like, watched it be played. So maybe if I played it myself, I'd like it a bit more. But I have to say I really liked those two images he had down there. One was, like, a bug, and one was, like, Terror of the Deep. That was really cool. So we hit a Tiger into damage, which is it's cool in the sense I don't want to deal with that card. But also, he you know, he can't cast it right now anyway. 
And I go in on Mr. Sid Randall, knowing that he has that, oh, what was that card he just searched for? I'm blanking on the card he just searched for. Oh, a Bosch. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, this is perfect. You can put that Bosch in, but uh, you're not going to search out another card. And seeing some of the other entry effects he has in the deck, I'm like, okay, well, this might be a good match for Sid Randall. And can shut off some of these entries. So he will. John's catching up on the match there after the break key. He actually opts to do nothing. Just passes back to me. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. So I draw two for turn. Adult two, put out Kate Sith. I want to say he's going to have, like, two Amaterasu in hand here. He shows his hand. He'll put it out on the field. And, of course, anytime someone puts out Kate Sith, he's like, well. So he's got Sephiroth, Bosch, and double Amaterasu. Kind of a weird hand. Uh, I'm pretty sure I opt to take one of the Amaterasu, which, again, is that the right call? What would you take here? So the thing is, I don't really fear Bosch or Sephiroth while Sid Randall's on the field. Like, what's he can't do anything with those cards. Plus, I look at his CP lineup. He actually can't cast Sephiroth right now off of just the Tyro, because that'll give him the Lightning or the Ice, but he doesn't have either other element. So the only thing he can even cast right now is the Bosch. So I was like, you know what? I'd, I'd still, one less Amaterasu to deal with is is uh, is the good thing. So I just remove Amaterasu from the game. Now a slight error here as John gets the break keys going. Oh, what's it going to be? Terror of the Deep or the Bug? The Bug Guy. I think it was uh, I think Terror of the Deep one, if I'm, not, if, not, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. Anyway, um, so there is a slight mistake here in the game. So I attack twice with Axis and Sid Randall. I hit Tama and Null into damage. However, Austin actually forgot to draw off of the Kate Sith. So when Kate Sith removes a card from the game, the person who had the removed card, they get to draw a card off of it. And I completely, I just, I'm so used to people just automatically doing that. I didn't even check to see if he did. I was just like, okay, yeah, go to combat, do that. So I have to, I get John's attention really quick since he's the judge for this. Um, yeah, I think that's Kyle Peters saying Kate Sith players need to be reminded. Yeah, I should have made sure he drew it too. And I, again, I just, I'm so used to people doing it automatically. I just assumed like, oh, well, yeah, surely he, because everyone else I play and I play test with this a lot, they'll just go Kate Sith remove instant draw. So my bad for not double checking. Luckily, it's a relatively easy fix. So the card he should have drawn was Tama, but John just has him draw a card now. It's a mandatory trigger, you know, not perfect, but I think that's pretty easy fix, quote unquote, all things considered. So I'll just have to uh, have to double check. I make sure I see it in the octagon window instead of just assume. We never assume they say. So now he brings down Riku, which is the whole point of this deck because he is he's just multi-element forward city. And at first I'm like, well, what do I care? I've got Sid Randall. However, Riku for some reason, and I wonder if this was intentional because of Sid Randall or just why it was worded this way. Riku actually says when you cast a multi-element forward, it doesn't say when it enters the field. So because it's when you cast, Sid Randall actually gets around that. Or, or she gets she gets around Sid Randall is what I should say because it's not an entry ability. It's not being triggered from an entry effect. So Riku gets around Sid Randall and I'm kind of like, oh, well, that sucks. Like, darn, I can't lock this out. And there's a little judge moment here too where we're asking like, wait a minute, does the Riku count? I'm like, well, given it says cast, yeah, when you cast a multi-element forward. So unfortunately for me, it does get around Sid Randall. Alright, uh, I think I tap three here for Zero Miss. Yeah, and the thing is, the reason I do this too is one, if Zero Miss stays on the field, he's just gonna be insane. Uh, by the way, this is a Knight of Zero Miss. Zero Miss was the card of the night. Uh, however, I also know he does still have that Amaterasu in hand, but he's got the Tyro up for the Fire CP. Again, it's gonna cost him three cards from hand to get rid of this Zero Miss. And so I'm like, okay, go ahead. If you want to Amaterasu this, you can. I'm still, he is essentially now turning into take three CP away from you. Sucks to lose Zero Miss. But the other thing is too, I now know he cannot use that Sephiroth in hand. Because that was my one concern is like, well, if I swing in, even if the Sephiroth doesn't get the entry effect, he can do a surprise block and I've just lost a forward for nothing. So now knowing he can't do that, I send the Axis in, and I'm 100% willing to trade Axis for Riku. Riku's kind of his little engine, so I wouldn't even sack Axis on the stack if he blocked to get the character. But like, no, go ahead. I'll happily trade Axis for Riku. He wisely doesn't let me do that, and I, perhaps a little uh, poetic justice, I hit Aziramus right into damage. 
So that comes right back. He attacks with the Riku, hits an Alba into damage, which I'm fine with. And at first, at the time, I was like, well, this is kind of odd he would attack with Riku, but I'm assuming he's going to have some follow-up play. He actually didn't. Well, at least not on his turn. So I go to my turn, draw, say, okay, well, let's just go right to combat, see what happens. I'm not swinging in Sid Randall no matter what because it's I have to keep that fort alive. He did have a follow-up play. He was just waiting for my turn. Now he plays dun 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 the card that I actually always forget it exists in this set. It's just such a, like a poor man Sephiroth. Although it's probably fine. He puts out Stone and uh, his entry effect doesn't trigger because of Sid Randall, but he can freely block the Axis, which is like, okay, well, now trigger Axis. Now, he did cast a multi-element forward as well, so again, Riku triggers. Not great for me because, again, now he's, he still has three in hand despite playing Sonin. But I, I'm not, you know, I'm going to lose a forward, but I'm going to get my uh, a forward out of it back, so I don't really mind this play. And again, seeing how many entry effects, I'm like, well, I've still got Sid Randall, so as long as I can keep Sid Randall alive, protected from whatever, I think I'll be okay. I What do I opt to get back here? Lightning or maybe Zero Miss again? I think I get, okay, I get back Weiss, that's right, because I see his hand size, and I'm like, well, I removed one Amaterasu, he got rid of the other one, so I don't think he, he can use a third even if he has it, and... Because of the way the Nero Weiss stack works, he really he can Amaterasu the discard, but Weiss will be 100% fine. Like, he'll have lost the card by the time Weiss triggers. And I think I actually go pretty ham here. So I play Weiss, Nero occurs, he throws out the Billy Bob he just got. Oh no, that's right. So he pitches Billy Bob and Axe Star for Sephiroth. Once again, so second time he's done this this game, avoiding the Nero discard into the Weiss Dull Freeze. And keep this moment in mind because we will talk about it later in the game. So he pitches Billy Bob and Axtar. So now I don't get the discard from Nero. Well, I mean, I kind of got it, but not really. So Weiss doesn't trigger for a dull freeze. But now I see, oh, well, your hand is entirely empty. So, okay, we can play that way. I'm going to I'm gonna force your hand. I'm going to say, all right, let's see. Okay, you have nothing in hand. Deal with this and you're on four damage. I lock out the Tyro, and now Zero Miss, as he has been since he came out, and will be tonight in this match of, all right, do you have an answer to this card? Because otherwise, your whole board's getting dull, and I'm just going to kill you next turn. So he goes to combat. He swings with Sonin first. He puts out Bosch just to have another body. Swings with uh, Sonin. I hit Sid of Klangolian to EX burst. Hey, I will take a, four, a lightning character back. Don't mind if I do. I grab lightning herself. Lightning grabbing lightning. He swings with Riku, but I see he has one in hand, and I'm pretty sure the one he got was like the Billy Bob he got back off of uh, the Riku trigger when Bosch entered. So I'm like, okay, well, he shouldn't be able to do anything, so I just block Weiss here. Get rid of his engine. Swing Sephiroth. He can't break anything. He can force me to discard, but the truth is he's honestly just giving up at this point. He's saying... He just realizes because he's going to dull Bosch here for zero miss, and he and before it even goes in my turn, he just takes three points of damage. He's like, yeah, you've got me. Zero miss. There's no burst that'll save him. No offensive burst. Zero miss just dulls the board. I would have lightning as well, so I'd have an extra attacker if I really needed it, but I had him. So, hooray! Zero miss got us there this one was it right quick and just really quick and boom it's kind of like ice lightning does so he had mentioned i mentioned the axe star play he said himself i should have just played out the axe star instead of discarding it because even though that the entry effect won't work if axe star gets a chance to attack he can still blow up the sid randall which is 100 percent correct now the only thing is that just happened on this last turn so I think I still, because I don't think it would have mattered, because again, the entry effect wouldn't trigger. He needs to get him to attack. Zero Miss is going to dull the board out, and then I'm going to do everything in my power to freeze the Axe Star, knowing it could kill my Sid Randall. So if he if he had done it way earlier, perhaps he could have he could have done something about it. Although again, then I'm going to target anything I can. He did twice get the Sephiroth out just to avoid the Nero Weiss trigger, and I'll leave that to you. Is that the right play? On one hand, I have to say, no, it's not, because, well, obviously he lost. But two, 
the Sephiroth again is getting no immediate value and kind of the way I was playing too, the Sephiroth wasn't going to get on any on attack value. At the same time, if you just let your opponent take that, so he would lose a card in hand and he'd lose a backup or a key forward. Well, that's not really a good idea either. So maybe the Sephiroth was the right play. Yeah, it's hard to say. That one is it's hard to judge. But that was match one. Uh, you know, thank you to Austin for being my opponent. And uh, we actually talked about afterwards, Sid Randall was the real MVP in this match because he, he said, yeah, I'm basically playing ETB's the deck. All these cards have enter the field effect, enter the field effect, enter the field effect. So to have Sid Randall come down early, <laughs> it's just, as, as John described him, as his like dad, you know, like, yep, hey, kids, uh, hey, I'm here. You know, what are you going to do? Can't, not, you know, not allowed. You're not allowed to do any effects. So that's match one. Let's see what happens in match two. So the, that first match I showed you was the second round of the evening. We went to four rounds this evening, and I was lucky enough to make it to the finals. Almost didn't make it past round three because, man, I almost got done in by these Garland shenanigans, the four-cost Opus 14 Legend Garland. And he had this really cool combo where he had a Goblin down, and he puts down the Garland, immediately gives it haste with the Goblin, and then just does the Flare special. And I was like, oh, no. You know, I lose one of my backups. So luckily, I was able to stabilize in that match. Like, it got to a point, damage five Weiss was actually quite useful in that match because he couldn't target it for anything. So, and with Ice, I can at least, I can dull freeze the Garland and just keep it down, keep it down, keep it down. It's like, if you can't activate, you can never use your special. So barely made it out of that one. Now I'm in the grand finals against Dalton, who's actually a very good friend of mine. So this was, I really enjoyed this just because it was like, oh, sweet. I actually get to, you know, fight someone I hang out with in real life. And so he goes first. He is on Ice Wind tonight. Just starts off with a Dragoon backup. Uh, since he made me go second, so he won the die rolling chose to go second, I'm looking for my hero, my boy, Laswell. Because Laswell, when you're going second to freeze that backup, ooh, it feels good. Plus, he's on wind. So I throw out the lock backup. Here comes Laswell. I actually had quite the opening hand. I had lock, and I want to say I had two other backups. And in a deck with 13 backups, like, what an opening, right? But I see it's on wind, and I'm like, okay, pedal to the metal. I cannot give this guy a chance. I just got to kill him as quickly as I possibly can. I throw out Nero and Lightning for Restrictor, because Restrictor's going to go get me the other copy of Nero. And I believe I pass here. Now, looking at this on Reflection, I probably should have pitched both cards to put out Nero, because then I'm set up on two backups. I'll get the Weiss. Weiss will be the last card in my hand, and I can play him on Curve next turn, right? So the reason I didn't, if I'm remembering correctly, I had zero miss in hand. And so part of me thought, well, there maybe there maybe there is also a world where I play zero miss, because zero miss will also freeze out a backup. And zero miss I can play on curve off of just one. And I don't hundred percent know his deck list. So there was also a small part of me, if I go in on the Nero this turn. So again, I, I lose two cards, put down the Nero. So my hand is empty. I draw the Weiss. Weiss is my only card in hand. I was concerned, perhaps irrationally so, because I don't even know if he runs this card, but I was worried about a three-cost Zidane coming down. Because I was like, if he puts Zidane down, not only is that actually a good blocker, because he'll be bigger than Lastwell, because my hand will be so low, he'll rip the Weiss out of my hand. In which case, then I really have no play. Whereas I was like, well, if I do this, if I keep my hand this size then he has to pick Zero Miss or Nero. And that's exactly why, because like if he if he rips out Nero, then I can still play Zero Miss on Curve. If he rips out Zero Miss, I can still play Nero. Or maybe I would have been one shy then at that point if he did take a card from hand. But anyway, that was my concern. On reflection, I think it might have been the right call to play, because I think he's actually playing the two costs of Don. I don't think he's running the three, but of course I didn't have a way to know that at the time. Or maybe he is running it and I just... I didn't see it. I don't know. So either way, that was my thought process, but, you know, judge that as you will. Anyway, on to his turn. He does put down Norse Stalin. Uh, where is it? Yeah, he puts down Norse Stalin. I believe he goes to search out Althea. And it's funny. Anytime I see Althea and I'm playing Ice, I'm like, well, that card's never going to activate. He even considered slapping it down, which I don't know if would be the right call or not. You would you'd, you'd basically go to one in hand, which you know then Lastwell is gonna rip out. So, 
But you also know I've got Weiss in the... Well, you know I've got Nero in the wings. Not necessarily Weiss, so... I don't know. It's. It, it, I think it probably makes more sense to keep the bigger hand size to see what you can do. So on my turn, now that I've got five in hand... Uh, I do. I play... I, yeah, so I play Nero now. I pitched Lightning and an Alcid, which doesn't feel good to have to throw those two cards away, but there's nothing to hit right now. Anyway, and I think this is a better payoff play. Play Weiss. Unfortunately, now I'm right in the situation anyway where I do have to discard my entire hand to do this. But my boy Laswell goes in. Make sure he goes in first to make sure nothing gets messed up because, again, should something happen that, let's say, kills the Laswell... Then I have to go with an alternate plan with the Zeromus. So I throw out Zeromus and Sephiroth. So I've thrown out four multi-element cards, which are all amazing. But I think it's for the right play. I dump my hand. But the reason is because Nero's going to trigger. I discard a card out of his hand. Weiss Dahl freezes his Dragoon back up. Then we get to go to end phase. A knight attack this turn. So my hero, my favorite card, Legend Lastwell, says, okay, discard a card. So he has to discard another card. Then Weiss triggers again and says, all right, Dahl freeze that other back up. So by doing this line, I was able to get two cards out of his hand, freeze boat back up, so I basically <laughs> robbed him of six CP. Feels pretty damn good against a wind deck. And again, I'm also threatening. I'm just going to come in with Laswell every turn. Again, didn't feel great to have to throw out all the multi-elements, but it's it's wind. It's ice wind. I pedal to the metal. No time to wait. So he ends up putting a Typhon down. He spins the Laswell away. Typhon's in the forward. But that's probably the right call, because otherwise I'm just going to keep hitting his hand. It would at least avoid the dull freeze from Weiss, but you, you want as much of a hand. So I attack with Weiss first. Knock a card into damage. Luckily for me, I top decked like a god. And put out the next Laswell, <laughs> which I just happened to draw. So I was like, all right, well, let's lock out another backup. No discard, of course, but goes to his turn. And I actually get to keep card and can this time. Yay! Thank you for the people in chat rooting for me. I just saw that. Thank appreciate that. He does play Althea, so he gets to reactivate. I don't think he has anything left to do off the reactivation, yeah. So he doesn't have anything to do so he passes back to me. And so Typhon is a forward now. 8k, so I've got a couple choices. I could send in Weiss, see if he'll trade. He probably wouldn't. He'll probably just let let, let Weiss go. So I could, ju could just get the point of damage. More importantly, I think it is the right call to party attack here because if he... So if he blocks this, he either gets rid of Vice, in which case I still get the discard trigger from Laswell, so he's now top decking again, or he blocks Laswell, but I retain a body on the Ford and I get rid of his only defense. Was that the right play? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I should have just sent Weiss in because it's highly unlikely he's going to trade Typhon for Vice. But I also, I, I, I like the idea of just, again, I'm going to get him either way, is the, I guess the way I see it. He's losing something. If he blocks the Typhon, he loses his only body. If he blocks, if, and he kills uh, Weiss, I get the last card out of his hand. If he kills Laswell, I, st I still have a body on the board to keep putting on pressure every turn. So I liked this line because I viewed it as I'm taking something away from you and I'm still maintaining some pressure. Plus, I'm pretty sure I'm going to follow up with Zeromus here. He does what I think is the right option. He blocks with Typhon. He kills Laswell. You don't want me to rip that last card out of hand. Uh, no, I put out Sid of Clan Gully. That's right. And then I think I let get back Zeromus off of this, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Al Cid is a little funky because I have to have... I don't have to have something to play it off of. But if he's not freezing, like I don't really value the Al Cid. I do consider Lightning and Sephiroth, but... Again, my, my thinking is, well, it's Ice Wind. Most likely, he's still going to try to build up because that's what that deck wants to do. If, if he builds up, he will just beat me 100% of the time. So I have to stop him from building up. So I like the Zero Mist because I can play it right on curve next turn, and it does attack his resources. That Althea is not coming up <laughs> if it goes down and Zero Mist gets out to the field. So he does have all of his backups, and he's got three cards in hand, but I'm hoping that's still low enough to not be able to do a whole, whole lot. I believe he... So he pitches one, puts out Lulu, gets back Chocobo. If I'm not... Yeah, he gets back the Chocobo. And at first, I'm a little like, well, that's a bit odd. Like, why did he do that? 
Because I, I thought, oh, he's just going to cast, he's going to try to like choke about Lulu Loop. No, not at all. He just left two backups past to me. So I was like, okay. So I redrawn into the last well that he sneezed with the Typhon. So, okay. Let's uh, knock out this Althea then. And the reason he left this up, left them up, and this was rather smart, he says, okay, well, on the stack of that, before Althea goes down, I'm going to use that CP and cast one of my least favorite new summons, Dryad, who on, who on a board of four characters can blast me for 8k. Ouch. Ops to get rid of the Laswell. He could have gotten rid of the... He tries to Lulu ping, but I just remind him, hey, that's only on your turn. Easy enough to forget. He could have hit in Vice there. I can't attack with Laswell this turn, but... I also understand Laswell is technically the... I mean, they're both kind of a continued threat. But, 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 and if you know my deck tech and Dalton might, this deck doesn't have a ton of discard in it. So there's not a guaranteed, I'm going to get the Weiss trigger every turn. Whereas Laswell, there are other knights. He has the on attack. So Laswell probably was the right attack. Or maybe he just did it to spite me because he knows that's my favorite card. Either way, I throw out Gentiana, put out Xeramis, and, uh... Yep, and so I freeze out the Dragoon as well. Althea's frozen from the last well still. Pass to you. So again, now I'm saying, all right, well, not only do you have no backups, you're not going to do Althea shenanigans. Now the zero miss threat. Hey, you got an answer for this guy? Otherwise, your forwards are taking the old dull snooze. The snooze of the dulls. He casts Chocobo on the Lulu, bounces it back to his hand. Lulu will trigger now, and I believe he targets Zeromis, turns him to 5k, which he does. Uh, and then he is going to discard. So he dulls Norstal, I think he puts Lulu back out, and he just gets the, the what's it called, the Dryad again. If I'm not mistaken. Yep, plays out Lulu, gets Dryad, and I'm pretty sure he's just going to cast the Dryad. Yeah. So, he casts the Dryad, dumps his hand. Lulu hits twice, which doesn't really matter. Uh, so, yeah, he had to get the one to get the Dryad back, get the zero miss. Probably the right play. He was questioning it later. Like, I don't know if that, that was the right call or not, but I don't think you can really leave zero miss on the board. And the Dryad is his quote-unquote clean removal. So... I think it was fine. Uh, and now I'm like, all right, well, uh, play Alba, which I'm so set up for here because I'm like, okay, I'm tired of getting bopped by that Dryad. So Alba comes in, removes it entirely. Alba now gains haste. Now I'm set up to not only go in with another attacker this turn, I can exile one of his characters. I'm pretty sure I get rid of, I think it was like Zidane because it, it was something that I was like, well, in case he has a Sura, this way he can't get it back off of a Sura. Alba's going to go to 8k. Which says, go ahead if you wanna if you wanna block the Lulu, but nope, he just takes the damage. Weiss goes in as well. Another take the damage, I believe, yeah. And and I hit Bismarck. Ooh, I'm just boxing that whale, pop, 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 right in your face. And I'm like, let's keep up the ham. So throw my hand out. Here comes the next zero miss. Woohoo! Freeze that Althea, baby. So now you have two backups, and you're going to have two cards in hand. Also, you're going to have to be dulled at the end of the turn. I'm feeling good. It's running super well. It always feels good to beat up on wind. He puts out a Tomos. That's the only play he's got. He puts out a Tomos, has one card in hand. Uh, he has to dull the Lulu to the Zero Miss. I want to say I actually have Lightning in hand here. or I have something that's like usable, but again... I should have lethal on board, so I'm like, okay, doesn't matter. Let's just go right to attack phase. Attack with the Alba, remove something, so Alba's going to be an AK, so there's going to be three 8Ks coming in. He's only got one in hand. He shouldn't be able to cast it, barring some miracle EX burst. I, you know, this sh game should be over. He tries to see if he gets it. Asura, so if he had hit, like, an Alexander or something to draw on the Asura and could have cast the Asura, he could have technically stayed alive another turn, but... He has to sacrifice a Tomos. I make sure to freeze out the uh, on the way out just to be sure. And boom, seven to zero. Ice Lightning just uh, pedal to the metal against Win. 
<laughs> Dalton, it, it was a treat to fight you, sir. He, he was a bit bummed afterwards, but I was like, it really wasn't, like, it was just the matchup. You know, I'm going, that's, that's what beats win sometimes. But in particular, you have to attack its resources. Like, if you just try to rush down win with pure aggro, I don't even think that works these days. But hitting his backups, keeping his hand low and low, and forcing him to have to, again, Typhon when he doesn't want to, forcing him to have to do Dryad when he doesn't want to. It is what it is. So there you go. So, yeah, this is the list that I did the deck tech on, and it won this RVA Weekly. Hooray! I think this is my fourth win now pretty happy with it uh looking back on these matches there again there's one or two spots where i kind of analyze maybe i could have done something different there but other than that i mean i'm just being aggressive right there, there's not as many decisions to make when you're just trying to throw your hand out and just constantly put on pressure put on pressure put on pressure so but if you see anything as always feel free to let me know in the comments check out john and the rva weekly if you have not already feel free to come play with us it's a, it's a, a good time perhaps i'll get to play you as well and yeah that's all let me know if you have any questions concerns likes etc and until next time take care